Welcome to the Crypto Mastery Class. I'm Susie and we've got Joe on the line. I'm also known as Crypto Girl, so we're excited to be here. This is where we're going to make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. We're looking at the news today, the overall market, hot movers in the basket, indicators, and question and answers are the most important part of today. So today in the news, top five Polkadot ecosystem tokens below is a $160 million market cap to watch in August 2022. This is by Will on TX.com. The Polkadot ecosystem is remarkable for its multi chain application platform. Some top players in the ecosystem include Polkadot, DOT, with a market cap of over $8 billion, and Chainlink, LINK, with a market cap of over $3 billion. Polkadot ecosystem tokens generally have a market cap of around $15 billion and a total trading volume of approximately 1.1 billion. In today's pick, NullXX will look at some of these tokens below the 160 million market cap. So first we have Centrifuge, CFG. Market cap is 119 million. The unit price is 39 cents. Distinct features are using the Centrifuge protocol, real world, world assets are turned into non-fungible tokens NFTs. A decentralized asset financing protocol is called Centrifuge. To minimize the cost of funding for small and mid-size firm, mid firms, SMEs, and give investors a steady source of income, it links decentralized finance, DeFi, with real-world assets, RWA. The project's main objective is to make money unrelated to the volatility of cryptocurrency assets. The developers are working on converting actual money from fiat to cryptocurrencies. Polkadot, DOT, is used in the centrifuge blockchain for speed and cheap fees, while Tinlake, its financial dApp, is built to access Ethereum liquidity. Centrifuge connects decentralized money with assets like bills, properties, and royalties, DeFi. Borrowers also gain from being able to finance their real estate without the use of banks or other middlemen. Next, the second one we have is REN, R-E-N. The market cap is $135 million. The unit price is $0.13. Cents. The distinct features are REN is a sophisticated platform with many applications, but its primary goal is to overcome the financial and access barriers for DeFi projects. That's decentralized finance. Announced in 2018, the open protocol called REN, R-E-N, was developed to offer liquidity and interoperability amongst various blockchain systems. REN describes itself as an open, community-driven protocol that enables value movement between blockchains. REN wants to lower barriers to liquidity between blockchains to increase the interoperability and accessibility of decentralized finance, DeFi. It enables DeFi projects to incorporate foreign cryptocurrencies like Zcash, ZEC, and Bitcoin, BTC, into their offerings as a plugin. Additionally, users are essentially able to exchange any token between any two blockchains without the need for intermit oh my gosh <laughs> intermediary stages like using so-called wrapped versions of tokens such as wrapped bitcoin wbtc and wrapped ethereum w e t h the third one is seller network c e l r the market cap is 135 million the unit price is 1 penny Distinct features are users of dApps powered by Seller will benefit from a rich multi-blockchain ecosystem with the ease of a single transaction, UX, free from laborious manual interactions across many blockchains. Launched in 2018, the blockchain interoperability of a protocol called Seller Network allows users to access tokens DeFi, GameFi, 
NFTs, governance, and more with just one click across many chains. The seller interchain messaging framework allows developers to create interchain native D apps, that's decentralized apps, that have access to shared states, efficient liquidity use, and cohesive application logic. The creation and use of multi-chain decentralized apps are significantly altered by seller. Developers may now create interchain native decentralized apps with effective liquidity utilization, cohesive application logic, and shared states instead of deploying numerous isolated versions of smart contracts on various blockchains. So things are getting really good, guys. The next one is Energy Web Token. That's EWT. The market cap is $138 million. The unit price is $4.60. The distinctive features are the ability to modify decentralized applications in one of the key selling aspects is one of the key selling aspects of EWT for businesses. Although other blockchains like Ethereum also offer this variety, Energy Web Chain was explicitly created for the energy sector. Launched in 2019, the Energy Web Chain, a blockchain based virtual machine, was created to facilitate and promote application development for the energy industry. It uses the Energy Web Token, EWT, as its operating token. By enabling developers to construct decentralized apps, EWT seeks to diversify the energy business dApps. According to the website, Energy Web's mission is to accelerate the decarbonization of the global economy. Grid operators, software developers, and vendors are just a few energetic actors who could gain from the virtual machine. Because it is designed with enterprise use in mind, the energy web chain enables cutting edge scalability and data protection. The last one on the list is Aster, A-S-T-R. The market cap is 150 million. The unit price is four cents. Distinct features. Asdar is working to make a parachain where EVM and WASM smart contracts may coexist and communicate with one another to offer the best option for all developers. Launched in January 2022, Aster Network is a DApp home on Polkadot that supports Ethereum, web-based assembly, and layer two solutions like ZK rollups. According to the website, Aster is a multi-chain smart contract platform that supports multiple blockchains and virtual machines. And guys, you always have to understand that disclosure is that this is not trading or investment advice. Always do your research before buying any cryptocurrency or investing in any services. So now that we got that through, it was a quick news article, but we're gonna go right into the market and we're gonna look at the overall market cap We'll look at a heat map and then we'll go into Bitcoin and Ethereum. So currently, the total cryptocurrency market cap overall is one trillion dollars. And you can see that seven days ago it was at 1.15, and then we have gone down a little bit in the overall market cap, but we are still trending above one trillion dollars. And this is the one week performance in market cap block size. So it's showing all gainers and losers. And the block size for my visual learners is significant of how much of that particular crypto is dominating in the space collectively and numerically when you take into consideration all the other cryptocurrencies market cap levels. So Bitcoin is the biggest box because it's dominating the market cap, cap space of 38.86%. Now, Bitcoin is the only box that actually so, shows the dominance per, percentages. It has been 40% for a long while, to be honest with you. So it's going down. But when Bitcoin's dominance goes down and the overall uh, market cap of the whole industry is not really going down then what's happening is people are investing in other coins other than bitcoin but they're staying 
invested in cryptocurrency. So at this point is when you want to look for the boxes to see which ones are bigger. Currently with this screenshot, you can see earlier this morning when I took it, that the boxes are red. There's three shades red and three shades of green. So just quickly, so you understand what you're looking at. The darkest shade of red means that the price went down three steps. The middle green, the, the middle grade red means that the price went down two steps. And the lightest means it went down one step. So if you look, take your eyes and look to the bottom and slightly center to the right, you'll see TRX, that's Tron. That's a color of a light red. Now, I tend to really like looking at the dark reds because that's when those things I would say are on super sale. So if you're in acquisition mode, you really want to zone in on the reds because you know someone took profit. And then what happens is when they get to the floor, they get bought back and they have a larger, larger rise range before it gets back to overbought. So if you are ready to sell something and take profit and you have chills, which is CHZ, you could see you would look for the dark green. If you say, oh, I need to liquidate some of my, my assets, I, I want to take profit this week, then you would be looking at the dark green boxes. So in the upper right hand corner, you see CHZ, that's dark green. So that's an indicator, oh, something is ripe. It's kind of like if you're growing tomatoes right now and you see a red tomato, um, that's when you pick it, it's time to eat it. And EOS, which is in the lower quarter right to the right of Tron, the TRX box, that's another one that is an indicator that it's up three stages in prices. So those are ripe to take profit and the dark reds you want to zone in to see if it's something where you're ready to get in and, and, and get it. And then again, remember guys, that the box size represents the market cap. So, you know, everything is volatile in crypto, but really, if you look for the boxes that are the biggest, that means you have the largest market cap, and they tend, they tend, you know, everything is changing so fast in crypto space, but they tend to be more, less risk, we'll say, less risk than the higher boxes. All right, so we're going to use the crypto mastery.online indicators now. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to get in and learn a little bit more about how to use them and get some more tutorials, you can go to crypto mastery.online and there's a members area with lots of tutorials. So you can definitely dive in and it's really perfect for someone that's never been in crypto before and they just need to learn how to use the indicators. So right now, this is what we're going to use as those crypto mastery indicators. And I did a snapshot of the Bitcoin USD one week performance chart. So on the upper right hand area, you can see the average true range indicator is still coming in as overall with an average true range on a one week basis that Bitcoin is still on a downward movement. There's an early reversal indicator that we're waiting to come up. In weeks prior to this, we had an early reversal indicator that came in showing that Bitcoin was going to go down. But the upward early reversal has not come in yet. So we're not out of the downward trend yet. Now, in the next indicator below that is the trend indicator. And some of each one of these indicators are utilizing different math. And we do have Joe on the line. So this is when the question and answers need to come to you and you can type them in now and we'll address them as soon as I finish with the slides. But currently with Bitcoin, two, two and a half weeks ago, the key indicator came up saying, hey, we have a trend in, we have a trend. It looks like there's a key opportunity coming. It looks like Bitcoin's going to go up. And then it did a little bit, but at this point, it is not and it wasn't powerful enough to change that trend line from red to green and it wasn't powerful enough of a movement or consistent enough for a one week average. So this is what you're looking at a one week average to to trigger a bell to come in or the following numbers. So we're still watching on this. Now this the radar is up in that category too. The radar is phenomenal because this indicator is showing us what Bitcoin is doing on four different time frames. On an average of one hour, it's moving up right now. 
on an average is four hours, it's moving up. On the average of a day, it's moving up. And on the average of the current week, it is moving up. So we could be looking at something really good if that, it's almost like a weather channel, the radar is like a weather channel, if those continue to stay in the green zone. The next indicator we have is a signal line. And this is really simple, guys. When you see red, that means the signal is coming in, that things are going to go down. Green means it's going to go up. So that's where we are. We're in the green going up. But here's the thing. You see that gold line on the signal line? When that gets really close, it's one of those situations where they could call it a sideline move, where it's not showing right now where it being such a tight, tight connection with the green line and the, and the gold line that it's a strong momentum upward. So you can see there's some resistance in the force of not allowing Bitcoin to go extremely up. But it's good to see this. So once you get to understand these uh, significant signal lines and all the collectiveness of all these trends, you'll know when something is a good deal, when you can see all stars or all indicators are aligned. And you'll understand when the signal line is separated from the gold line, the color and from the gold on the signal line, that that's a pretty strong movement. So the next indicator is the TSI, trend strength indicator. And you can see the little green dots are showing an upward momentum. And so that has been going on for a few weeks now. So trend is showing upward trend. The volatility index is one of my favorite. It's saying that Bitcoin is still oversold. And the bottom area is a 20 to a zero zone. And that is showing that within the zero as like the ultimate oversold and 20, the beginning of the oversold zone, it's ranking at a 9.48. So that's really rare for Bitcoin to be this low. And it's very exciting for someone that's in acquisition mode. So hang tight. You know, we're not out of the oversold zone yet. But the good thing about this is when you're able to acquire an asset in this low, low oversold zone, you have large, large room, a large area for this asset to grow upward before you need to take profit again. So we're in a good acquisition place, but the, the key is, is to not acquire, and this can't be financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, but the name of the game is to, to get it at a low price so you have room for it to grow and then make sure you take profit when it's in the high zone. All right, so now that you understand those indicators, we can quickly go through Ethereum. So Ethereum, average true range is still saying moving down. The early reversals come in a week ago saying it's gonna go down. The trend indicator came in as a key opportunity, a bell, a one, but you can see that this last week, the one did not go to a two, which shows that there was some resistance. So you had the early reversal indicator come in saying, hey, this this upward momentum is showing some resistance. And then the trend indicator reflected that. Now, the radar was showing for the week it was down. But currently, it looks like this week average could be changing if the consistency stays the way it is, showing where the 60 minute on the radar is showing upward, the four hour is showing upward, and the one day is showing upward. So again, guys, we're looking at a one week performance chart. So it's exciting to see that potentially Ethereum may be turning around if the radar remains green in those three upper zones. The signal line is looking good for a potential upward trajectory. You notice how the green line is more separated from the gold line, that's good. Now, the trend strength says that this has been moving up for a few weeks now, and it's moving up, but it's not in the oversold zone yet. And the volatility index just broke through the 20 line on the volatility index, so it's at 21.37. So comparative to Bitcoin, remember Bitcoin on the earlier slide had a volatility index of nine. So Bitcoin is at a super low zone versus Ethereum. It looks like it's getting out of the oversold zone. So uh, this is one of these moments where you may want to get 
into a more if you're if you're wanting to get in and get out of something go towards more of a one day chart because the one week chart is not showing yes 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 and all the indicators collectively so in our basket we have bitcoin ethereum polygon cardano chainlink litecoin cosmos algorand harmony phantom and solana and most of these coins can be found on coinbase so we're going to look at the hot movers in the basket so I have my watch list organized with utility and then trending up for one day and one week. And then below that trending up, there's an indicator combination where the, the day is up or the week is down and one where everything is down. So out of all the coins on the Coinbase watch list, what is trending up for the one day and the one week collectively together simultaneously, GRT, CRL, which is crypto coin, ZEC, Zcash, Bitcoin, Gala, Chills, and Bitcoin Cash are all in the upward trajectory collectively for the day and the week. And then in the utility range, the Ripple, Stellar Lumens, and IOTA, those are a combo, meaning either the day is down or the week is down, but one of them is green. But amongst those four, Algo is moving up for the day and the week. So just when it comes to your watch list, um, you want to organize a watch list just to keep up of the movement of the coins so you can organize your watch list by percentage of change the amount of change in price the last price the symbol name and you can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what's ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell and these coins that you see again are up for the day but i always look at the coins that are on the floor to be ready for my next low buy and so now we're going to look at the crypto screener for today. So I organized this crypto screener by the one day technical rating. And also it's organized by the green flags. So on my watch list, I had clicked on the green flags. So I was pulling over anything on my watch list from multiple watch lists, I guess, that have the green flag. And then I organized it by technical rating with strong buy up top. And again, this is not financial advice, and this is not how I don't purchase coins based on just this trading view crypto screener, but it is saying Chills, Loom, TRB, and Zcash Bitcoin are up for the buy right now, taking into all their considerations, which I'll show you in the next slides. So in the crypto screener, you can filter by just your exchange and just something quickly review so you understand this. The acronym is on here. What they stand for is average moving rating. And then the, the last means the last price. And the SMA stands for simple moving average for 20 days, 50 days, and 200 days. And I have an arrow looking at the 1W. You can click on that little arrow down and you can change that to one day, one week, multiple different time frames. So this is just a quick slide so you guys can see that. But there's going to be more tutorials on the CryptoMastery.online in that members area. And that way you can get a better detailed understanding of how to use the trading view. So and then you can get a better perspective of how to use these indicators. Just so you guys have the indicators, na indicator names that come with Crypto Mastery. It's Volatility Index the ERI, early reversal indicator, dynamic average true range, the trend indicator, indicator, the trend strength indicator, the radar screener, and the signal line. And then these are just some quick slides so you guys can kind of see what you can do. I do like with the indicators, the radar indicator is one of my favorites because you can customize the timeframes three minute, five minute, 10 minute. If you're wanting to sit down and just do some intraday trading, meaning like if you wanna get in and out within five minutes, then you wanna look at shorter time frames. And the radar does transform one computer screen into what typical traders are gonna use for computer screens for, because you could see all these different time frames aligned at one time. It's a very easy way to just go into a laptop mode into trading and have one computer that does it all so you have more freedom in life. So then you have the trend indicator and the trend indicator will have a key, a bell and one to seven trend when it's continuing in that direction. 
And again, these will all be inside the members area with a better understanding of what it is. And please ask some questions. So go to cryptomastery.online and subscribe above. And now we're going to go into question and answer and get Joe on the line and look forward to getting you guys up and running in your trading. And please ask questions. And um, for now, while we're waiting to Joe to uh, say hello, I will show you guys my watch list. And I'm going to show you what I did this morning and how I organized my watch list. And um, if you guys could all let me know if you have your own watch list and if you have it organized, then that way I know if you guys want to do watch list today. So, Hello, Joe, hi. is there... Hi, how are you, Joe? Hi, Susie. Hi, everyone. Okay. Hi. So, was there anything that you want to draw our attention to, Joe, or should we just go through the watch list and show everybody kind of how I organized mine? Uh, well, yeah, before we get uh, into this, right, there's just uh, a couple of things I just want to touch on. Um, one is, is what's moving right now, right? So um, what I wanted to do, and this is uh, a great starting point for anyone new uh, that just started, is it how we go to the crypto screener, right? So if you click that tab, and uh, what we want to do is, is we want to see what's moving. And see this uh, crypto screener here, this is a part of uh, trading view, but it's, it has generic um, uh, technical analysis, which is really good for looking at money flow. And this helps um, when you're utilizing the chart overlays, it's complementary, which also shows in here where the market flow is going or where the money's going. And so this by itself is really useless. But being that you have the chart overlays, this is complementary to how to interpret your information on what's moving. So uh, there's a couple of coins in here that I wanted to take a look at. So first is, um, uh, what, we, what we did is, is we removed the different columns and we should only have uh, two columns which basically is our technical rating and our exchange. So at this point, what we want to do is, is go to the exchange and we want to choose Coinbase only. So I'm in the exchange, guys. I clicked on the arrow down and I'm just going to scroll down to Coinbase. All right. So there we are. Okay. And then what we want to do is is that we want to sort everything by the technical rating. Okay. So if you scroll to the top and let me see here. And I'm on a one day chart. So do you want me to be on a one day or one week? I want you to go to a daily, right? Just, just keep it on the one day. Okay, so guys, so you come to this area and you can scroll down to your one day, click on that. I already had clicked it, but I want to make sure that they know how to do it. Okay. Okay, and uh, what we want to do is, is that for some reason, I'm looking at mine and... Uh, it looks like I think you're missing symbol. Like you see how it says ticker matches? Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. So, yeah, let me take that off. So previously I had, you're right. Thank you, Joe. I had clicked on this because I wanted to only pull coins that were on my watch list. So what Joe is saying is take that and make sure that that's blank. Good call, Joe. Okay. And uh, so now what we have in here is we want to start in here from up at the top and we sort it by strong buy because some of these uh, products may be already in play, uh, but there may be uh, different case points where you might be able to set your alert and you might be able to uh, 
um, find something here interesting, uh, which is moving uh, eminently and um, in trade. So uh, first example here, and this is the uh, the packs, right? Uh, let's take a look at this because today we got an ERI on this. So if you, if you could put a make it a, a full screen and just minimize. Sure. So, so guys, you're just gonna click on the. Um, well, you're gonna click this and then click the little bar right here to minimize that. Okay. Okay, and if you could make the chart a little bit tighter. Now this packs right here, hold on, this isn't a good example here. This packs isn't a, this isn't a good example. Hold on. Uh, let's go yeah, to the coin so right below this. It, I think that's a stable coin, that's what's happening there. Yeah, yeah. This, this is where I wanted to start. So, okay, so right here, we, right here we got the uh, ERI yesterday, or two days ago. And then today we just got a bell alert. Now what's interesting so with this is that if you look at the suffix, this is BTC. So it kind of seemed like uh, with the increase of volatility we had the last couple of days, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, with the pipeline that's going to be shut down for three days in Europe. That it seems like those worries or uncertainty is just, you know, it's creating some uh, some in increased volatility. And if you if you look at that Susie, that tick that it had in there a couple of weeks ago when it popped up high there on that one candle. Right, like right there. So it started around here, went up to that. So that's 70. If someone would have sold at that point, it would be 74% in 23 days. Yeah. Well, this time here, we got the ERI, and then today's the bell alert. So you want to pay attention, uh, I would say, over the next two days. Um, this may, may be eminent uh, to... Uh, move higher and and we're just getting that first cross on the signal line So right now it'll be inter interesting to see uh, What happens on the next number one print tomorrow? Yeah, and the radar is all green guys so look that's 60 stands for one hour This is 240 minutes. So that's four hours one day in one week. So this is a beautiful weather. It's like the sunny days. It's like come out and enjoy the beach. It's great weather. Oh, oh, as I say that it changes. Oh, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> How's that possible? Well, it, well it's I uh, guess updating. It's, uh, one hour and, average and, change. Someone's making profit. <laughs> no, well, look, that's updating in real time, and the market is volatile right now. I mean, remember, you're looking at a daily bar, so you're not seeing what's happening on the the second by second trade right now inside of that bar. The only thing yeah. you can do is is that you today right now you got the bell alert, and the next step is is that this being that this is a daily chart at around five o'clock, I believe that's when we get the last print on this bar, and then that's when the cycle starts with the new number one print. So we want to be looking over the next couple of days to see if this thing uh, starts to the numeric count and goes to three. I mean, if this is an orderly trend, it can easily go up to three, and we can be looking at this next week, and it's up 100 points from where it's at. The, the, you know, so now, if this is a fail, uh, you know, we won't see any numbers. We'll just get a bell, and uh, maybe, you know, the next day we won't see any color. So um, this is going to be one that we want to, uh, watch over the next couple of days uh, to see what happens. Um, another one, Susie, that I wanted to uh, go on because there's a, there's a couple of them that are moving in here, but there's 
one in particular. Yeah, this one. C H Z G B P. So this, I think this is a great example of taking profit because look at how many people, well, on a one day basis, because this one had really, the entrance came in with the average true range back on July 27th, it went up 135% in 27 days. Yeah. I mean, this might be, I mean, it still looks like it has more room to go though. <laughs> it looks like it's really have... strong. Right. Well, I mean, the signal line's a little tight for a one-day basis, but that's some really beautiful momentum. But we are in the oversold zone up here. We we went up, down, corrected itself a little bit, but it showed some resistance on going way down. And on the volatility index, guys, look at this number. We're at 86, and the, the ceiling's typically 100. So yeah. we're beyond the top Keltner band, too, for one day. Yeah. And, and sometimes when markets are like that, it, it just may be fast. I mean, because you can tell when you look at the uh, trend indicator. When we get into a week, or I'll go back to one day. I was just looking at it for like on the one a larger time frame. So if you look at the uh, trend indicator, like you can see that uh, uh, we're on a two right now. So it'll that'll be one in here interesting to see um, how that progresses. But it, that looks like the market is just really fast. It's beautiful for anybody that got in on June twenty second. That's a great scenario literally two months all june july to august 62 days it went up 163 percent uh okay I, I found something in here we we just got an eri yesterday uh fort f-o-r-t-h uh btc So this is one in here, where is it that we got our first green dot on the TSI? Well, first we got the ERI uh, yes, uh, two days ago. Then yesterday we got, it looks like a TSI, and we're still waiting for the uh, signal line, and we're still waiting for the bell alert. So this might be uh, one in here, which, um, has some room to go. I mean, the idea is is that some of these coins may be in play, and then some of them there may be an opportunity that the technology is showing us that we could scale into different positioning. So, guys, what I'm going to say is is waiting. Oops. So we're waiting on that trend to happen. And on a one day basis, when you see these black indicators, those are mean means that it's not it's it's reflecting the volatility index on the bottom. And then the volatility index, you see how the line is in the black zone. That's what those candlesticks are reflecting. So it's not an oversold and not an overbought. However, it's still moving in that zone, and that is a large zone to be moving in. In fact, I mean, if you look down here, look how much it moved being in those zones. It went up in two days, 178%. So there must have been some major activity going on there, major acquisition going on during those times. But it must have, that must have, that one movement, that's one day because we are in a one day chart. So that's only two days. So people that were very 
tentative to their assets, they most likely took profit and thus it went down. So, so we're waiting here, we're waiting on the signal line, but the signal line is tightening down here, so there is a good chance it could be moving up. And we are on a one day chart, so one, two, three, three days ago it said it will be moving up, and it did. Do you guys have any questions so far? There's nothing in the question box. We'll just continue going and looking, Joe. Hey, Susie. It's Brett. Hey, guys. Yes. Well, since we're on this subject, I was just looking too. There's some great setups. Um, a couple of smaller coins like Haven Coin is a good one, and also one I've been watching called Metis. So, yeah, if you can pull up XHV, these uh, have really nice setups on a daily basis. And um, you know, on Bitcoin, the uh, you know we have a small ERI, and it's kind of oversold on the TSI. So we, if we do get a bounce here. Because um, the, the radar on my end, at least, is all green on Bitcoin on the daily. So I don't know. I think we could get a little bounce here. Uh, you know, everything's out the window with all these uh, news-driven fears. And Joe was mentioning with them shutting down the pipeline, which I didn't hadn't heard about. But you know, I'm a firm believer. Uh, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. So uh, let's see. So Haven Protocol. You know, we have. Let's see. Maybe put the trend down at the bottom. And Let's see, I'm looking at, so what I'm seeing on the actual chart though is a nice bottoming pattern. And so if you zoom out a bit, or maybe I could share my screen, I don't know if that's easy to do here. Sure. You Let's do that. that. I'm gonna queue it up, I don't yeah. wanna confuse everyone. So let me just change. Oh, oh, yeah, just let me know when you're ready and I'll. Well, Thank here's you. the thing, I've got three screens. So I have to make sure that it goes to the right screen, but if you can uh, share that, with me, we we're just making some updates in the Active Trader members area and Crypto Mastery and things. So, um, yeah, you can go ahead and start sharing. So, it's going to ask me hopefully which screen to share, and I can't tell. What What are you guys seeing? Oh, uh, I see the Telegram right now. Okay, never mind. Here, so you should be able to see this. Sorry, guys, I've got I've got a complex system here. Now. Great. Okay, I can see that you can see that. Beautiful. <laughs> so, all right, let's open this up here and basically. Uh, this is Haven Coin. So let me jump out a little bit just so it's not so messy. But we've got all green on the radar. This is a great project, by the way. It is a Moonstream pick. It's a um, based on the Monero token, and it has to do. It's a privacy-based stable coin. Do your own research. But this, um, you know, has come down significantly off the highs. The ERIs are most effective after an extended move. We are making some changes to the ERI that'll make this a little cleaner without so much noise. But where I'm looking, what I'm looking at here, and you can see this bo this bottoming pattern, both at the 42 cent range, 43 cents, it's held here once, twice, three, four, and five. Generally, breakouts or breakthroughs happen on the third, fourth, or fifth. The third or fifth most often. It looks like we're getting a bit of a bounce here, which is interesting. We have an ERI printing. And you see this arc that I drew, sort of a nice bottoming pattern forming here. So I like this just based on those two. If we open it up a little bit, we what do we see here also? A TSI, this is, you know, even though our signal line is flat and everything else is sort of flatlining, so I'm going to turn these off for now. But based on the ERI, hence the name, the early reversal indicator, when these two align, it really very often is a uh, great signal. So this uh, TSI crossing up above the 20 line right there. So I really like this and um, just posted this in the active uh, trader chat actually. So, I mean, look, um, you know, these are precarious markets, but on a risk reward basis, this has some interesting characteristics. So for a short term swing, there's some resistance up in this area about a dollar. So let's say that we wanted to put on an imitation trade here, you know, or, you know, paper trade or real trade even. And uh, putting our stop loss, I don't know why they suddenly have started putting the stop loss a bazillion miles down below on these things. What is going on with this thing? It, it, it can't go negative. We know that. So maybe a little bug in trading view. Let me come back into this area here. Oh, now it's completely buggered. Let me redo this. So basically what I'm getting at, and um, here, let's try this again. So if we put that there, ignore the stop loss going into negative, something buggy in uh, trading view. But on the upside, let's say that our goal or target is let's say at a dollar okay so right in here 
just below uh, the area of resistance up in this range. And if we set our stop losses just below this 42 cent mark, then it's pretty good risk reward ratio, I would say. And uh, you know, not financial, financial advice, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, this is pretty interesting. I like this. We're all green on the radar. We've got an ERI just printing, and we have the TSI coming up. And what I will share with you, I actually turned off the uh, ERI oscillator. The ERI oscillator does give some additional clues on these things because I've been staring at this thing a lot lately. And uh, so part of what we're going to be adding or changing uh, is, um, without getting into the weeds, is I think it shows up better on my next pick I want to share with you guys. This midline here, it has some interesting characteristics. So when the midline is green, that means that it is below the Keltner channel. And you guys, again, just a little bit more advanced. Typically, these are turned off on the ERI chart. But I'm going to turn it on, this little button here, Show Keltner. This is one of the genius things that Joe had built onto this. And uh, so what it means is it's more oversold, right? So the green midline here is green when price action is below this blue band, which looks like a Bollinger band, but it's, it's actually a Keltner band. And when it's down below these, it's like a rubber band, much like the Bollinger. It sort of pulls it back to the medium. So my favorite ERIs, even though they're showing little arrows here, are when the counter band, uh, when the midline is green, showing more oversold. See a nice little bounce on that. So we're gonna see, we're, we're sort of having the programmer modify some of this. I mean, Joe's the main programmer inventor, but you know, he's a busy guy, and so we've brought on another guy to kind of do the, uh, the coding work once we tell him what to do. So uh, in that regard, uh, we, uh, we've had a number of these ERIs, and they've been very effective in these bounces here. One, two, three, four, and five again. So I think it's a pretty interesting pattern here. Again, all these coins have their own personalities. And so when you watch them, you can do well on these swing trades. And so it doesn't look like much, but we're looking for base hits here in these types of markets. So this was a 57% bounce off the last ERI. And uh, so we see something similar on this one here, and we go 57%. You know, we're back into the, we're up into the 75 to 7, 80 cent range, and you know, 60%, 50, 60% beats a sharp stick in the eye, doesn't it? And so uh, we uh, don't want to be swinging for the fences right now. But if I really zoom in on this, um, it's a, it's, you know, this is really good time to be honing your skills and getting comfortable with these patterns and the indicators because some of you are sort of new watching this saying all right looks interesting i don't really get it can i trust this and um <clears throat> the sooner you can trust these the more that that uh the sooner that you do the more the faster you'll be able to make money so and you know i do recommend keeping these uh, stop losses tight and again this pink area here i don't know why it's doing this with straight of you but anyway um i'll stop whining about that just annoying <laughs> so let me come back down here but i do want to have a complete example for you guys so coming up here so if your stop loss is now now we have a little clearer example stop loss here basically around so just below 40 cents you know if it come it has come down and bounced off of these before but we want to see higher lows if it's not putting in higher lows then we have a problem so let's say we say let's say we have it at 41 cents well, our risk reward ratio on this, if I just put everything away here, is 3.46. Anytime you have a three to one, generally good. You know, even two to one, but I like to see a three to one risk reward ratio. So uh, in terms of what we have, and beggars can't be choosers, not a whole lot looking good right now, but there are a few. And so that might be one to um, <clears throat> keep an eye on, but also these patterns. So ERI and the TSI together, uh, very, uh, you know, that's usually enough for me to get into a trade if the markets seem like they could be ready to bounce. And we have the, uh, again, the radar green. Our North Star is always Bitcoin. So what is Bitcoin looking like? Well, you know, look, it's on this rising trend line. TSI hasn't crossed to green yet, but it's we have an ERI here. And the reason I went through that before with that midline my favorite ERIs are when this we get the arrow, but also we see the green center line. And that again means it's below the Keltner band, so it's more extended. So when we see these ERIs happen and there's a green midline like back in here, generally we get a pump. 
and uh, and then certainly as, when we have the TSI follow. So I don't know, guys. I think that um, you know going into the weekend, we could see a bit of a push. I think we do have some more downsides. You see, I have the 300-week moving average drawn in here. So this is not um, necessarily a buy and hold. But if we do start to rally, some of these coins that are beaten down like that can rally uh, quite a bit higher. So the other one I, I want to show you is called Metis. Now this is this is XHV uh, again, the one we just looked at, just so you have it. This is note to myself um, by a pullback. So definitely you want to have these notes set up on your charts. So you know, hey, when this happens, what was I looking at the last time? So Metis is the other one, similar to kind of chart pattern. It has an ERI triggering. I had a nice uh, bottoming pattern back in here. And uh, it's in a nice sort of uptrend, so I'll turn off the uh, Keltner channel, but look at that TSI starting to turn green down below, right? So we have this. This is not quite ready yet. It's letting the cake bake, as Joe says. But when this comes up above the 20 line, then uh, that's when I want to know about it. And uh, actually, Joe, I, uh, I'm struggling. I've been struggling a little bit about how to set alerts on this. Maybe I do have it right, but... Yeah, right. So that's not this one. It's a different one. So basically, if I wanted to, my num lock, the number lock is off. So let me try to draw that in. What I want to know is when the TSI crosses up over 20. And, and I believe this is uh, correct. And so sometimes it does that on the price. But when it comes up, okay, good. It did. So that means this is my sort of line in the sand. TSI above 20 and recent ERI. Okay, so this is one to keep an eye on and maybe do some research on. Interesting project. But, you know, I was just messing around and you guys were asking, though, what looks good. So I uh, thought I'd mention that on the weekly. What looks a little overbought on the weekly, I guess, is the downside. And so we have a negative ERI. So, so with that in mind, it shortens my time frame. And in case you guys are wondering, how do I work with these on the daily if it contradicts with the weekly? And that's a good question. We have a nice cup and handle here forming. And uh, so on the weekly, this is starting to print a little bit bearish. It has a, a bearish ERI, so but it's a daily bullish. So what does that mean? It means we could push higher into the weekend and uh, and then kind of roll down again. So again, these are base hits. Uh, the better looking one is um, uh, is Metis here. We look on a weekend or weekly there. So this is this is a totally different example, right? So weekly, we are also looking like we're turning higher on the TSI. So a uh, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, just is one to keep an eye on, right? So we have TSI coming up above that. I'm going to set an alert here as well on the weekly uh, to break above 20 here, crossing up. And that's one I really want to know about this. And if it if we keep pushing higher into this weekend, might actually do it. But oversold, turning higher, I like it on the daily. Also turning higher. It's rare you see these so much in alignment. Uh, on the daily and weekly, so uh, I really like this uh, this whole pattern here, and it's going to be um, you know a gem in this whole mess that the rest of the market's in. But um, anyway, I hope that uh, helps. There's maybe a couple other gems in here I really haven't dug around much, but anyway, good examples, right, of what is uh, kind of coming around now. The signal line and the trend indicator still red, so we would like to see these also come around. But uh, we don't need those. I mean, they're nice to have. Well, maybe I'll be, I'll be careful what I'm saying. It's not that we don't need them. They're obviously nice to have and better. And the best places are when we get them down below and a deep correction on the signal going red to green. So this was back in here. and uh, But that wasn't corresponding with an ERI or anything else. It was only later where we saw that. So, you know, they're good to confirm that the trend indicator is more of a longer term turning around. And uh, it's not, it's not, it's red right now, which means no trend. We start getting a key and a bell, <clears throat> then, then that's going to be even more interesting. But uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with just the, t the TSI ERI combinations, and uh, seeing like this, the radar's kind of gone to red here. But anyway, um, you know, Joe, if you have any kind of input overlap on that, uh, but uh, so I was just messing around looking at these things, and this one. I've had on my eye, uh, my list here for a while, and um, just it's a nice kind of bottoming pattern here. So who knows? Be a good place to pick some up. And if it does, before I kind of close off here, is if it does continue back up, let me turn off the ERI back to old highs. And eventually, these things are going to come back to their old highs, right? So if we can buy it at 50 cents and it goes back to 16, 17 dollars, well, that's a 3,872 percent. 
And, uh, you know, I'm confident in this may, you know, I'm holding some, so in full disclosure, and I may buy a little more because it's held once, twice, three times, four times, five times, right? at this 42 cents, 43 cent level. So, you know, as long as we have our stop loss intelligently placed here and we take profits here, I, I mean, I might take some profits here and I might let some run up to the $2 range and then uh, hold on to it for a moon bag because again, if we get, if we get a two, 3,000 kind of push higher on this, say I've got alerts all over this already, but you know, the, the bear market is a great time to be intelligently buying and dollar cost averaging. So anyway, that's just my two cents. Uh, I don't know, Joe, if you had any comments uh, to chime in there, but I uh, thought it was worth mentioning. Oh, that's a, that's a great setup. I love it. You know, it really has the potential to uh, make that move. Uh, a, a classic saucer bottom. Yeah. So. Well, and if you guys have any other ones, I, I don't see any questions uh, in. So, Susie, I'll hand it back over to you. Just thought I'd kind of chime in on that a little bit, and and uh, if you want to kind of wind down the class, but I think mean, it's a good point to you know close out on an up, uh, you know, upswing or sort of good news or whatever you want to call that. But uh, instead of all red and doom and gloom. You know, I think that we could see at least even a push up here to 70 cents, which has also been kind of a channel that we're forming. It's not going to, not a barn burner, but a nice pattern. I think that was great. I, I really appreciate you jumping on. It's always a refreshing moment to hear you analyze the market and to see your chart today. I guess want to make sure you guys know how to create your, your watch list, make sure that you're we're doing the watch list and the last thing that i want to just end with is just making certain that you understand like if you want to use this radar just to simplify your watch list to find things or keep track of of some coins like those coins that brett just talked to you about is that you can add them so let's just say this isn't a coinbase coin but if you wanted to add that to your watch list just simple housekeeping a actually that was x VH, wait, oh my gosh, XV, oh, what was that thing? What was, X, XHV, um, Susie, XHV, I almost had it. HV, XHV. You got it. Okay, so then you just click here and say the plus signal, so then it comes onto your watch list, because I think everyone's probably going to want to watch that now, Brett, and then you can click on that, and the radar is up for the day and up for the week, so for my organizational system that I've got developed, it's going to be a green flag and then I'm going to pull it up into a subcategory where I'm going to just keep pulling and then I'm going to drop it in this zone right here. So now I know these are the ones that particularly and you could create a whole sex, another sub like a sub subsidiary watch list or something saying this is what I'm involved in this is what I'm invested in because sometimes you get invested in multiple coins but either way I want to make sure you know how to add it to your watch list and then here's the other watch list so just GRT these are the things that I found where the radar was all green so GRT CRO Zcash Bitcoin well, at least it is up for the four hour, the one day and one week. So I just wanted to draw your guys' attention to that before we jump off the week so that you have some good coins to kind of keep watching and looking. Or if you have them currently, you may want to take profit or if you're moon bagging, as Brett would say, you may want to hold on to some and see if they keep going further. So with that being said, um, I appreciate you guys being here and I look forward to seeing you next week. So is there anything you want to say in closing? Um, just uh, great coins, uh, great opportunity. Um, good luck trading, everyone.